Okay. So the fourth of the Asarita Jabrod, assuming we count it as ten, is Shabbos. Um, now there is a, a lot to, uh, to talk about in Shabbos, obviously, but let's try to uh, pick up some salient, uh, salient points here. Um, so, one of the most striking things about the Asherat Hadibra is, as Chazal already draw our attention to, the fact that all the um, Dibra, which is repeated in the least similar way of the, of the Dibra, is Shabbos. Because when we get it here, it's Zachor, and in, in Vat Hanan, it's Shamor. As well as many, many other differences. As well as many other differences, correct. Shamor b'zachor b'dibur echad, as the song would tell you, or, is that one, or as the, the Midrash would go, which appears in many, many places, in the Mechilta, it appears in the Yerushalmi and Nidarim, it appears that um, all the different things that, right, Achas dibur elokim sh'taim zu shamati, ma'ashe i'efshar, the Pelo Marvel owes him Lushmoa. All the different times when God said two things at once, and we can't do that. So one is Shamor and Zachor, one is the Isser of Eshet Ach, and the Mitzvah of Yibum, one is Tzitzit and Kilayim, all those things. But really, it's much more than just Zachor and Shamor, because the differences are profound. And they really present two different perspectives of Shabbos, which are worth exploring. Now, maybe I'll start with a start with a story. Um, so last year, on the first night of Pesach, I, um, I said to Meir, so he was just, just under six, and I said, it was Friday night, and I said, what is special about the fact I was about to make Kiddush, and I said, what's special about the fact that Pesach starts on Friday night? And what did he say? What's special with Kiddush? So without, bl- without batting an eye, he said, because Shabbos is repeated twice in the Aseret Hadibrot, once it's Zechel Masa Breshit, once it's Zechel Etziat Mitzrayim, so on Friday, yeah. Friday night, you have both. Wow. Wow. Which is how I know I have that my son gets a good education at his school because that was my that was my kid before first grade, um, Baruch Hashem. Um, but he's but he was absolutely correct, and that is really um, I think the key to understanding this um, is that it's not just Zachor and Shamor, but it's in fact two very different perspectives on what Shabbos. Is. So let's try to just outline what they are and maybe talk about some of the tensions or how la halacha this, um, this was expressed. We're talking about Shabbos. The two different versions of Shabbos. I, by the way, I looked on Why You Torah because I'm like, we've talked about Yitro so many times. I'm like, what did we cover last year? And it turns out I've given 23 shirim on Yitro, but wow. apparently not actually talked about this point. Un- <laughs> unreal. I was shocked. I was like, I assumed I did, but I think probably what happened was last year we said we're going to... Yeah, we, we said we're going to do things that we don't normally do, so we never got around to things that we should normally do, so... Okay. So, in Yitro, Zachar et Yom HaShabbat Lekacho. In Va'et Hanan... Very good. Shamor at Yom HaShabbat Lekacho, Kasher Tzichad and Elacha. So there, the main difference, obviously, is um, Shamor versus Achor. The, the difference of Kasher Tzichad, Hashem Elokecha, doesn't bother me at all, because Yitro is when God is speaking, and Vayet Hanan is when Moshe is recalling God speaking. So Kasher Tzichad, Hashem Elokecha, doesn't make sense when God is actually talking. It makes sense when Moshe... So that, yes. fine. Continuing in, uh, in, uh, in Yitro. Sheshit yamim ta'avod vasida kom lachdecha. Now reading from Vedchanan. Sheshit yamim ta'avod vasida kom lachdecha. Okay, we're good? Yeah. Exactly identical. So now, Yitro. V'yom ha'shvi shabbat lo'yna elech lo ta'aseh kom lachha ta'avin chavi techa avda chavim techa v'gerecha shabishar echa. 
In Vetchanan is Vyom Ashvi Shabbat Ladonelacha, Lota Se Homlacha, Ata, Uvin Chauvi Tacha, Vav de Chava Matravish or Chave Hamorcha, the Hol Behem Techa, the Gercha Shebisharecha, Lima and Yanuach of the Chava Matraka Mocha. So it's 75% the same, and then you get a difference. And what's the difference? You get a lemaan. You get a lemaan. A lemaan is very important because what's the lemaan? The tam. And what's the tam in the etchanan? No, the reason, the rationale. So that they should rest. So that they should rest. That is the purpose. They shouldn't work so that they should rest. Which is almost tautologous. But it's not. Why don't you have that pasuk in, in Yitro? I, mean, I want to see if you remember this. Zachor. Right? Well, it's about uh, creating the world. Well, very good. Because in Va'et Hanan, as I said before, it's Zechel Etziat Mitzrayim. Which means. In Yisrael. No. In Va'et Hanan, it's Zechel Etziat Mitzrayim. And therefore, why shouldn't you have the people in your house work, your servants work? Because there's a value in letting people rest. And why should you value that? Because you were slaves, people. So let me continue in Vedchanan. It's pretty clear. Al Kain means because God took you out of slavery, He told you to rest, but not you, to ensure that society rests. Because that will benefit the avadim, the shvachot, the workers, all those people. Because you remember what it's like to work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. As a slave, God gives you Shabbat to ensure that society rests. That's the theology, the theological point being made. You don't get that in Yitro, because in Yitro, it's no one should work. Not that you have social responsibilities, but... No one should work. Why? Right. No one should work because Masabrashit. So it's not just one is Zechel Masabrashit, one is Zechel Etziat Mitzrayim. The Psukim actually tell you that this affects how you understand the work problem, the Malacha problem. In Shabbat, no one should work. And that's an, it sounds like that's a personal responsibility. Everyone has to make sure that they remember Yitzhak Mitzrayim. But the element of Shabbat, which is Yitzhak Mitzrayim, is not just personal, it's ensure that society is resting. Because that will ensure that you don't have the constant work of, of slavery. So that seems to explain at a basic level... The, the differences between the, the presentation, between these two views. Now, obviously, they're related. The Ramban makes that clear, right? At a certain point, theologically, the fact that God performed miracles is what proves he controls the world, and control of the world of that extent can only come from he who created it, right? That's basically the Ramban's theological bridge, meaning these are not separate theological points entirely. But they do manifest themselves um, differently. I mean, this is the, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of work been done in the Mepharshim of going through what different versions of, uh, of Shabbat would look like um, if you only had a Zachor model, if you only had a Shamor model, how do they complement each other, um, and what are really they doing? But, um, but let me add the following point. Do you only violate Shabbat if you violate Malacha? Uh, no. See, Zev wants to say yes. Right? Zev wants to say yes. I know Zev wants to say yes. Zev wants me to. T- Zev wants to say there are Malachot, and then there are things about the spirit of Shabbat. But the words Chilul Shabbat right. are limited to Malachot. Right. Except he'd be wrong because, because he'd be against Chazal. Because Chazal brachot davav, guys are doing dafiyomi. No, are you doing dafiyomi? So the Gemara says originally I saw people running to Shabbat to shul on Shabbat, and I said, 
Michalin Rabbanan Shabbata. The rabbis are being Michalel Shabbat. And then I was told to the mis- mis- that it was okay to run to Shul because Chavetzecha v'lo Chavetz Shamayim, etc. But Chilul, how is that Chilul? And here's where one of the things I think is important, and this is the point I'll make. When you look through Tanakh, um, Dafka, there's a blurring of the lines between Chilul Shabbat and the spirit of the law of Shabbat. But, and this is the interesting thing, it seems to be mostly on the... Sh- see, when, when you think about it halachically, we tend to think Zachor, that's Kiddush, that's the assays, and Shamor, those are the Los assays. That's true, that's how Chazal take it. But in the Psukim, Shamor, which is what we talk about in terms of Malachor and Chilul Shabbat, is in the context of the Tziat Mitzrayim-esque part of Shabbat, and Zachor is by Masabration. Now, if you think in terms of Masabration, Chilul is only the things which are formally Chilul. But when you start thinking about the Tziat Mitzrayim-esque Shabbat, and that Shamor of Shabbat, what is Mechalel, that Shabbat? Any yeah, it's the it's having society run as normal, which may you're only Chayav Misa if you violate the Malacha, but the idea behind Shmirat Shabbat presented in Vatchanan is that all those things we call Spirit of the Law and Muktzah and all those things, that's actually Mechalel, that element of Shabbat, in the, theologically speaking. Now, you'll tell me, okay, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm making things up, but where do you get this from? I'm not, right, this is not just me, but where would you get an idea like this? Uh, so I'll read you. Yishaya. What? Yishaya. So, Yeshaya and, who are the two people you have to look at? Uh, Nehemiah. Um, right, well, okay, we'll do Yeshaya first, and then I'll, I'll do Yeshaya, I'll do Nehemiah, and then we'll finish, okay? There's so much to do here, and that's why, I, that might also be why we never did it before, because really this doesn't belong in ten minutes, but, uh, but, uh, we can do it forever, right? Um, so, Yeshaya Nunchet. Yes, you are approaching the end. There's still some to go. So here you go. Here. Uvanu mimcha charvot olam, mosdei dor vador tikomeim, vikora lecha goder peretz, mishovev nitivot lashavet, im tashiv mishabat raglecha. If you stop, so it's a, pun, it's a pun here. It's not totally clear what it means. But, right, Tashiv mi Shabbat raglecha is if you stop... Stop it. Tram, right, stop trampling, really, on, right? Like on Shabbat. Right. You turn... Asod chafatzecha biyom kadshi v'karat al Shabbat onek l'kdosh Adonai mechubad v'chibato me'asot derechecha m'mtso chefzecha v'daber davar az titanag al Adonai v'yerkavticha v'matei aret v'achadicha nachalat Yaakov avicha ki b'adonai diber So here he tells you stop trampling the Shabbat by calling it an honor not doing your normal affairs right? There is this blurring of the line right? You would have in halachic language you say this is all zachor but he calls this um, right, the trampling of Shabbat, not like you're not being mekayim, like you're actually in some way hurting Shabbat. But it's much clearer in Nehemiah. Right, this, this point is much much clearer in uh, in Nehemiah. Um, if I remember correctly, it is Nehemiah. Yeah, Nehemiah Yud Gimel, the the end of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is very very clear. Okay, we'll finish with with this. Yeah, I'm going over whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> Bayamim ahem, ra'iti v'yehuda dorchim gitot b'shabbat, b'shabbat, u'mivim ha'arimot, v'omsim alecha morim, v'afyayin anavim tenim v'chom masa mivim Yerushalayim b'yom ha'shabbat, v'ayid b'yom mechram tzayin. I saw people treading wine presses, bringing heaps of grain, loading them onto donkeys, bringing all types of fruit, and I admonished them for selling on Shabbat. Do you hear what's going on here? I saw them carrying it, da, 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 and I yelled at them for selling. For selling. Vasorim yeshvuva, yim dag v'chomechom, rochrim b'shabbat levnei yudav, yushalim. All these people were selling. 
וערבה את חורי יהודה ואומרה להם מה הדבר הזה אשר אתם עושים? ומחללים את יום השבת. You're selling on Shabbat? חילול. They possibly violated actual מלאכה there. But it's clear that what is he calling חילול? Business as normal. And you get that from Vayet Hanan. Because if the point, if the theological message you're getting on Shabbat is the Vayet Hanan one, which is the society should rest, so big mechalel that is, if you have your workers go to work and buy and sell on Shabbat, you're not, it's not there's no zeich letzim and shayim ki huzeh, even if they're not technically violating the malacha. Right? The malacha, creative acts being what violates malacha is... What we learn from Maseh Breshit, from the Mishkan, the notion that you can also be Mechalel Shabbat by making Shabbat into a week, like, e- weekday, even without violating Malacha, that's Vayet Hanan, and that's Nehemia. That's what Nehemia is saying. Where do you think? The Gemara got the language. He's running. He's being Mechalel Shabbat. What do you mean Mechalel Shabbat? Isn't that a formal language? The answer is, no, it's not. Non Tanakh, it's not. This is why your shrine was destroyed and you're adding Ched al Pesha to be Mechalel Shabbat. And then he says, and how did he solve Chilul Shabbat? So Zev would want him to say, stop Melacha. He doesn't, unfortunately. But he says, Vayhi Kasher Tzalulu Sharei Yushalayim Lefnei Shabbat. So when the shadows filled the gateways, meaning it was turning Shabbat, don't open the gates. So that no goods should enter on Shabbat. I closed the gates. That's how I rented Chilul Shabbat. Very good. And once or twice the merchants and the vendors of all the wares spent the night outside Yerushalayim. What are you doing spending all night there? If you do it again, I'll, I'll kill you. Right? You know, I'll take, I will, whatever, he, I'll lay hands on you. I don't know what he's going to do, but Nehemiah is no, is not afraid of physical, <laughs> he's just not, he's just not. Um, etc. Um, so I think that this is part of the picture. Is and you know if you want this in halachic language, it's the Ramban, right? The Ramban says that the mitzvah of of what of Shabbaton is all the things that we call dirabanans. He says no, there are kiyum darais of Shabbaton, and the way the Ridva explains it, Nifzak Lalach also by Rakariel and the Chassam Sofer quotes it. Um, is that if you violate it once, it's Darabanan. But if you make a lifestyle of it, that's a violation of the Darais of Shabbaton. And what it turns out is that, theologically, the reason that that's so central, and there is that blurring of the line, is because of that second perspective. Obviously, Malacha being the only way to violate Shabbat, created, that is very much true of Malachot, if they are Zechot Maisa Breshit. But to say that Chil Shabbat is more about preventing Shabbat from becoming a normal day, what we call Shabbaton, right? and, but that also being Chilul Shabbat, not just yeah, a nice thing, but also being part of Chilul Shabbat, that makes sense once you realize that theologically that fits in with the 50% of the perspective on Shabbat in the Yisrael Adibrot, which is the Zechel Etzim Mitzrayim, the main point is to make sure that people are resting, which doesn't happen if life is as normal, even if you're not violating Malacha. And I think that one of the things you get by these two perspectives, and really, sh- to do Shabbat fully, you have to go through the perspective and Bresha and the Bresha of the and the, there's many, many, many times when Shabbat comes up, is to realize that, yes, halachically speaking, formally, only Malacha is Chayv Misa, and is real Chilu Shabbat in that sense, but the reason Tanakh blurs the line is because the fact that half the theological message is Zechel Mitzrayim, is making sure that life isn't normal, that you have a rest Period, and that's actually definitional, not an added level. That's why there is this blurring of the lines between what is called Chil Shabbat in Yeshayo, in Nechemia, in Shabbaton, in Vayet Hanan, um, and that's really part of the complexity. So when Chazal tell you that Zachor v'Shamor b'Diboracha, they're not just saying like, oh, these two things, right? They're saying there are two com- competing visions here, which 
right, are sometimes seemingly contradictory, and the key of halachic Shabbos is to somehow bring those together and make a Shabbat that's true to all the elements, which is not necessarily so easy. Okay? Let's go ahead.